Thank you for joining us. This is Paul Wilson. And Chris Hemke. And you're listening to the Diesel Performance Podcast. Today, we're talking exclusively about the Diesel Power Challenge 2019 presented by XDP. Yeah, so last month, uh, the Diesel Power uh, magazine came out with the ballots for the readers to decide on who gets into the Diesel Power Challenge. Absolutely. Now, we feel so grateful to the whole team over there at Truck Trend, Diesel Power Magazine, and KJ Jones for allowing us to be the official podcast of the Diesel Power Challenge. Uh, This is the 15th DPC. Oh, uh, my God. And it goes down June 6th, or I'm sorry, June 2nd through June 6th, in Denver, Colorado. Man, I remember back in like 07, 08, getting the Diesel Power magazines to my house <laughs> and reading them. Oh, God, 15 years. Yeah. 15 years. Yeah. If that doesn't make you feel old, I don't I, know what does. I really am getting old. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Now, we've had large, really large fields to pull from. Uh, this year's a little bit smaller of a crop, so there's 23 featured pickups. Uh, they were selected by the team based on the entry and application. Yep. So, so, let's, yeah, so let's dive into that just a tad more. Uh, people want to compete in DPC, right? Sure. So they end up submitting their vehicle to the magazine, yep. and then the magazine ends up publishing uh, the mag. You know, a, a, an appropriate selection right. of those applications. So with those applications, sometimes they don't fill out all of the information. That's a good way to probably not, not get, get in. in. Uh, sometimes the trucks just nowhere near or too far built. To be a DPC competitor, right. so right? they're not years, looking to bring on Levon's race truck. A few years ago, they made this uh, this rule, right? It can't be a shop truck; it has to be a personal owned truck. Yeah, a daily driver. Correct. It can't be, you know, your shop race truck, and then you go out and you know destroy the field type thing. And so. this is this is a good time, I think, Chris, for us to talk about the difference between DPC and UPC or UCC. UCC. UCC, UCC I can't even Paul. get the letters right. Jeez. Uh, so you know ult- what? Ultimate callout challenge is primarily shop trucks. There's there's a few privateers out there in the field but but it's it's mostly for shop trucks it's a big budget biggest horsepower fastest truck best sled puller that's the goal there it's, it's all about the truck itself and just the truck i think i think with you know diesel power challenge it, it both contests are based upon the driver you know how good are you at navigating and, and operating the vehicle but dpc with what tests they have implemented it is about the driver it really is. Yeah, it's so much more about the driver. Uh, with UCC, you can change drivers throughout the event. Mm-hmm. So if you want one guy to drag race and one guy to dyno and one guy to sled pull, you can use three different people. Diesel Power Challenge, that's not the case. You well, get one have, driver, right. one truck, and a team. So they get a couple of pick guys to help them out with stuff. And some of the differences between, again, DPC and UCC is they have their trailer racing, right? Yep. They also have the trailer uh, course, the towing course. Yep. Uh, you know, Which, which the, is a nightmare, by the way. I Extreme. Extremely challenging, and then the fuel, the fuel mileage, right? They the, fuel the fuel mileage, mileage, which I think is probably the worst name test on earth. It really should be a, called a torture test. Uh, it's simulated driving through large hills, stop and go traffic, and on the highway. So, so these drivers have to push their trucks through extreme conditions while strapped down to a dyno uh, to simulate driving out on the road. Now they do measure. <clears throat> fuel consumption at the end of that test but the real teller there i think last year when i was at the event live only half the guys made it through the the whole event without having to stop because their trucks overheated oh and it's the first event oh oh so there's like an immediate torture test right off the bat that pushes these trucks to their limits of being able to drive on the road so it's not it's not the 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 number they measure is how much fuel did you use throughout the test right but you also it's a computer simulation so you're watching this little dot stay between two bubbles and you you have to work your your accelerator pedal to keep the dot there and and brakes as well so guys would would like Man, Travis Richards with a manual transmission. Yeah, he did great at it, but to be honest, it was tough. Oh, it was sure. real tough. Um, you got to test the driver. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah. So yeah, so five competitions. Uh, we we covered most of them there. They do also do a quarter mile race and a sled pull. Oh, uh, yeah. I think are the only ones we missed. The cone course. Um, man, it 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 sounded so dumb to me when I read this in the magazine originally, and when I saw it in real life, I was blown the fuck away. Oh, it it, it is. Chris, it, it's tight left-hand turns, a sweeping right, and then they have to they had to back up straight with a trailer on for like 150 feet. Okay. At speed. Wow. I, I mean, backing up straight sounds easy. Oh, it's a small trailer. Well, for you, it's not. It, it's definitely not. Everybody <laughs> knows I'm terrible in yeah, reverse. I see you drive your SUV, <laughs> man. It's tough, man. <laughs> Shit. Uh, but but this is this, this but, is a a full week of. Yeah. 
of pushing your truck and pushing yourself and pushing your team. Repairs are, are guaranteed to be done on the spot. Yeah. Uh, it, well, it is a wild event. And I think it's 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 funny that you mentioned, you know, um, one of the things that I've learned over the years is you could be really good at something, but when you have a crowd of people watching you do it, <laughs> your nerves get the best of you, you might not be the best. So there's like two parts that you have to, you know, uh, practice. Yeah. Controlling your nerves under pressure and being a good driver. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's dive into the field here. Uh, we're going to kick it off with the Dodge Ram trucks. Uh, we got numbers you can find in the magazine or online. Uh, number one came up as Jacob Benton. Uh, he's out of Hut. I'm sorry. Harrodsburg, Harrodsburg Kentucky. Kentucky Chris walk me through this truck beautiful beautiful truck by the way I mean all the trucks honestly are gorgeous that I've yeah. seen um, but it's an 07 and a half uh, Ram 2500 59 Cummins estimated 1200 horse 1900 foot-pounds of torque runs a single s480 by forced inductions uh, big extra G injectors boom fast lift pump uh, EFI live tuning um, no injectables no yeah. injectables on this, so no nitrous, so a big turbocharger at uh, elevation. Um, Paul, let's dive into something real quick, right? So we were talking about something a few minutes ago yep. before the recording, and you had mentioned that unless you have nitrous, don't even bother going to Colorado. You, you, I, I just don't see how you're going to gonna pull a first place win. Now, if you want to go to Colorado and prove something about no injectables, that's great, but your proof isn't going to be in taking first place. That's just not real at elevation, especially when the rest of the field generally either had nitrous or added nitrous at the event. I, and my rebuttal to you was, I think it has to do with the truck and the setup. So Nick Pregnance, you know, the yep. boss chief over here, we've talked about this in the past of, you know, is it a thousand horsepower truck that's going to win? Is it, you know, a, a four-wheel drive truck that's going to win? You know, what what's the recipe here? Um, and at elevation, I mean, you are going to have to change it up. So I do agree with you. If you're going to run a big turbocharger, you need the nitrous to aid spool. Yep. But at the same time, I mean, you could probably get away with a very conventional, smaller set of, of turbochargers and a compound application, and you, you might have a chance. I think if you go back through winners over the last three to five years, you'll see not only are they running compound kits like Cody Pulliam, mm -hmm. um, but they're also running nitrous with it because while that while that compound kit spools so quickly and performs so well at sea level, you're still adding a restriction by being at 5,000 okay. foot elevation. Okay. Uh, so Dimitri put it really well when I was there last year. He said nitrous is essentially elevation in a bottle. Yeah, I agree. It's, your, it's the only way to compensate at this level. So, so we'll see. I mean, there were guys. Uh, we, we did have a couple of guys last year in the field um, even taking second place w without injectables. But I'll tell you what, man, getting your truck to last, getting your truck to, to be able to perform at the same level as everybody else, I just don't see a way around it. If the rest of the field is running nitrous, I don't think there is a turbo kit out there that's going to gonna compensate for it. All right. That's just my All guess. Right. Well, you know what? But, hey, let's kick it over. We don't agree uh, on much. Well, let's, go, <laughs> let's get to the next truck. All right. So number two for the Dodge. John Bowles, Longview, Texas, got an 06 Ram 2500, another 5.9 in yeah. the field, 1,200 horsepower, 1,800 foot-pounds of torque. Chris, let's let's just take a moment and talk for a second about the numbers we've seen printed in the voting and then the numbers we've seen dynoed in Colorado. Yeah. You know, first off, you know, being in the industry and understanding a lot of the turbo and fuel setups and things like that, there, there are some of these in the past where you read this and you're like, yeah, there, there's just no way. Like, yeah, there's just no way. <laughs> Um, some of the setups that I've read here today seem to be a little bit more accurate. Yeah. Um, with John Bull's truck, you know, an S four sixty seven over a S four eighty eight, so S four over S four compound setup, um, dynamite diesel, one hundred fifty percent injectors, lift pumps, and things like that. And he has it rated at twelve hundred horse. I would say at sea level, that but that's, that's modest. Like that's I believe accurate. it. I definitely believe it. Again, again, listing anyways, no injectables. Right. Um, and, and this is something that I think guys could change. You you could get voted in and decide to throw nitrous. You on could it. listen that's to Paul's. Totally expertise okay. and say you know what i'm doing this i don't know if anybody would call what i say expertise I mean, but how, i like it i like the way it sounds there ain't one motherfucker that i know that would say that <laughs> but that's okay all right number hey, let, three let's talk about chris gelbaugh beautiful truck friends with him on facebook see his truck 
goes to the drag strip constantly. He's a uh, Virginia he's PA area. So Mechanicsburg, like, bro. Yep, so, so he's a mechanic. He's a mechanic. But uh, <laughs> he runs around in, uh, you know, like the Dwight Croons of the world and the uh, Daniel McEwen's know him and stuff like that. So I always hear his name here and there. Sure. But big turbocharger, right? 1,200 horse, 1,800 foot pounds, 0659 Cummins. Uh, it's a 80 millimeter with a 96 turbine, 1.15 AR housing from Forced Inductions. That's a big, big turbocharger, guys. 250% injectors and yep. the new 14 mil pump. And look at what's in what's in the injectables category nitrous yeah so definitely needs it there yeah um, Th- this is seriously this is a truck to to fuck with oh absolutely. i, I just i, I want to throw that out there i think this one even though it's that single that big nasty single uh that could be somebody that that really breaks some hearts there for sure now the next one i'm all about right so uh <laughs> seth Kuntz out of jefferson georgia he's got a 97 3500 ram cummins 1100 horse 2000 foot pounds Chris, what do you think about this HX40 and HX60 setup? Fucking sweet. Yeah? Yeah, dude, that, that, that's like that's like OG 12 valve stuff. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is, is you think that you think that's still competitive today? I mean, I I would be curious. I would be curious. I mean, we've seen some 12 valves in the past do very well. Okay. Okay. Um the 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 dinosaur technology isn't dead by any means. I mean, we see, you know, uh what is it? Driven driven diesel repair. Uh, power driven diesel. Power, power driven diesel. You know, if uh, you, you see all the hype that they have on social media prior to UCC, they're doing some crazy things. They can keep stuff together. When you go to a lot of the sled pulls, you know, the, at the professional rankings, you know, from all the different events, uh, national events across the country, a lot of the en- en- engines are still mechanical injection. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not dead. It's really not. No, I mean, big power. I mean, look around. Y- you know, big power still comes yeah. from, uh, y- you know, some of the most oldest archaic technology yep. we have in diesel so and it looks like power driven diesel has their hands in this truck uh they have their uh, afc live which uh basically it's a rotary style switch similar to like what we deal with with the uh, dsp5 really and it uh controls the racking of the pump to help with smoke control and fuel delivery okay swear to god yeah okay and uh you know it looks like they have you know some uh, intake and exhaust work done they have a built trans um some water meth, things like that. So sure. definitely a cool truck. I'd like to see that one compete. All right. All right. Back to another 06 with Cody Lambert uh, coming out of Ohio. 1,100 horsepower, 1,950 foot-pounds of torque is our estimation on this one. Now, it's got that 467.50 okay. by Taterbilt. Um, and then some some extreme fuel system. Yeah. We'll just say we'll, we'll wrap it up with that. Uh, you guys can kind of look into that a little bit more. Uh, got some EFI live on there, got nitrous on there. Hey man, I like this truck. Yeah. Beautiful truck. And I mean, we've seen, you know, similar setups like that here in house, like on our dyno, you know, I, I think his uh, horsepower, uh, estimations are pretty right in line with, with what would be reality. Um, now the next guy, um, I friends on Instagram, Facebook, things like that. Really cool truck. Uh, Steven Lucero, uh, he's out of Las Cruces. Sorry, probably hacked that. New Mexico. Las Cruz. Another 06-59 Cummins. This is a mega cap, though. I'm just going to make a wild prediction <laughs> here. We're going to see a 59 at, at UCC. I guarantee. The, the, like that third gen 59. I guarantee is two of the three of at least are going to be common rail 59, you know, 06, 07 trucks. I mean, that's, yeah. that is the sweet spot for these guys. You know, when you think of all the year Cummins, all the year Rams, 06, 07 are kind of the golden child to have and to modify for, you know, tuning capabilities, which granted other trucks have some of that capabilities these days, but the ECM and the 06, 07s are sought after. The platform themselves are sought after. So that, that's the truck to have. So, yeah, you know, it, it is because we got another one coming up here too. Andrew McCain, uh, also out of Ohio, uh, another 06 Dodge Ram 2500. Now we got a six seven in this one, so I, I'm not sure if we got a typo or an engine swap here. Uh, love to see a six seven Cummins thrown into an 06. Well, that would be that would be part of the advantage um, when it comes to you know the elevation having more displacement in the motor and things like yeah. that too which is definitely going to help sure so we also got a set of compounds on there s472 yeah. s488 look uh, at those injectors a little bit bigger uh than our previous one 400 percent over in exergy injectors this dude's about to start a forest fire for yeah. sure <laughs> and a 12 mil pump uh he's two. got plenty two two i'm sorry two yeah. 12 mil pumps he's coming to party along with nitrous so uh, andrew mccain i gotta say so far that's that's my favorite setup i've read through uh, we'll see if somebody else bumps him off here. It looks like we got another S464, S488. 
uh, compound kit on a 5906 Cummins. Yep. That's Chris Patterson's truck. Um, man, just a lot of them in the field this year, huh? Yeah. Now, let's just dive into the next guy, right? Number nine, Ben Shaddy. Now, this one, uh, th- th- it threw me for a little bit of a loop here. We have so many questions, Ben. Um, we're we're, we're going to reach out. Um, but uh, Ben Shaddy out of uh, Osgood, Indiana, 2018 Ram 2500, uh, 6.7 liter Cummins, 750 horse, 1500 foot pounds of torque, uh, running a fleece cheetah uh, turbo over an S480 and a compound application, 100% injectors, uh, drop in lift pump, 12 millimeter injection pump. Uh, he does some of his own tuning. But what threw me for a loop here is it has a stock air to air intercooler. And it has an HSP diesel cold air with a custom dual DPF exhaust. So this isn't this is insinuating that this is an emissions equipped truck with two DPFs. I have so many questions, Ben. We, okay. If anybody knows Ben, uh, we'd love to have him on the show. We'll be sending you a message on Facebook as soon as we're done recording this. Uh, we're very excited about this truck, guys. If you haven't seen it, jump online, vote for it uh, by buying a magazine cutting out the uh mail layer the ballot and, and, back, and, and yep, yep the ballot and back and send it in that is the we, only way you could vote we absolutely correct uh you can vote as many times as you want totally acceptable so buy as many magazines as you'd like uh, we would love to see ben go to dpc with this truck so number 10 um anthony williams uh Another 0659 Cummins. Uh, 950 horse, 1,800 foot pounds. Single 64 uh, yeah. millimeter turbo on this. I mean, he, he's got nitrous, nitrous too, so he's he's pushing it. I love to see that he's, he's got tuning by one of the other competitors. Right. Um, the, by Ben, so so great job there. But, uh, man, I don't know if that 64 is enough to compete. Also, don't know of many 950 horsepower, 64 millimeter turbos yeah no i mean uh that's kind maybe of, that's with nitrous may, yeah that's what i'm saying he has to be spraying it i mean who knows you know what yeah. we, we, we're not experts here sure um i'm know. also not looking at any of the engine upgrades no. here so we don't we don't know how built yeah. an, a, a motor is right we just a, know the add-ons yeah. they've listed and then a 10 millimeter pump and 100 percent injectors so that'll be i'm curious about that one absolutely so hey, chris before we dive into the ford trucks i just wanted to remind our our listeners uh we got that chance to go over to wc fab shop last week yeah had a great time there. Got to check out the L5P and the the new R and D on their twisted turbo in there. Yep. A uh, lot of really good stuff there. Also, we got a chance to sit down with Jason and talk to him a little bit more about something I thought was really nerdy, but we end up getting a ton of questions, and that's metallurgy. Yeah. So, hey, real quick, guys, we're going to kick you back over to a, a segment we recorded last week with Jason Worley, just talking a little bit about. Oh, some of the the different metals and different types of metals that we use more, uh, more when, or less. when they're when they're doing fabrication yep. over there. We've uh, we've definitely learned and learned what works and what doesn't work. Um, you know, as Chris mentioned, there's many different gauge thicknesses out there, and there's a lot of companies out there that that sell intercooler pipes. Um, that shouldn't go on diesel trucks, in my opinion. Uh, they might work fine on a gas or application, making that 15 or 20 pounds of boost. But, you, you know, one thing, for example, is we'll, we'll talk about aluminum piping. Um, aluminum is nice because you don't got to worry about any, any sort of rust on the inside of the pipes. And in some applications, you could just put the pipe on your vehicle raw. You don't even have to powder coat it, even though most people would like to. Um, and we use all sorts of materials. We use stainless. We use mild steel. We use aluminum. And, you know, as of lately, we're actually converting a lot of product over to aluminum, but we're not using the the standard as most people have in the past of 16 gauge. The problem with 16 gauge aluminum and high boost applications is you go to put your T-bolt clamp on your silicone boot. And I know, I don't think anyone, I don't think I've ever seen anyone. And I know none of you probably do either put a torque wrench on your T-bolt clamps. You just crank them down. Right. (laughs) And when you're cranking down a T-bolt clamp, you're going to crank that sucker down until it stops cranking. And or, the it, problem or, with, or it blows out. Or it blows out. <laughs> or you strip it out. I mean, you want to keep your boost in. You don't want your boots blowing off. You know, obviously the bead rolls are there and that's important. But the issue with some of the thinner gauge aluminum, aluminum is obviously much softer. Um, you start cranking on that T-bolt clamp and it essentially will, will dent or cave in the pipe and essentially cause a boost leak, cause the boots to blow off. So what we've, what we've done recently with a lot of our product, um, uh, A for weight savings, and B for uh, rust for prevention is we, we've changed a lot of uh, intercooler piping 
over to aluminum, but we're not using 16 gauge. We're using 14 gauge. Okay. It's thicker and you're not going to concave it. I mean, numerous occasions, numerous sizes, um, before going in the oven, after going in the oven, because uh, aluminum can be annealed and become soft and hard through different processes. Uh, you will strip out a T-bolt clamp before you ever cave in or dent one of our intercooler pipes from tightening the clamp too much. So it's, it's a lot of, it's just like we mentioned earlier, um, you know, improving upon older product and just making things better as we go along and as we learn things. Um, you know, so, so the cost savings, aluminum is going to be a cheaper uh, material for us to buy versus say stainless steel. Stainless steel is your top tier, most expensive material you're going to buy. And, uh, you know, it's, it's tough shit, but it's going to raise the price of all this product that is already very expensive. Sure. Um, so we're able to keep prices the same or potentially even drop prices and offer you a, a better, longer lasting material. That's not going to fail under these high boost applications that these trucks see. All right. So we're back from talking with Jason and we're, we're still in Ford trucks or, or we're just about to kick off Ford trucks here for diesel power challenge 2019. Uh, Chris, the first one at the top of the list, um, an 05, a, a, a six liter. Now, I have, I have made a lot of statements about six liters on yes, this show. Yes, you have. Yes, but you I have. have to be honest. Uh, I don't want to say I was proven wrong. I think somebody proved that there, there's always an outlier. Yo, Charlie Keeter made me a six, <laughs> a six liter believer, my friend. Shut the fuck he up. He did. <laughs> That's one of the baddest trucks at UCC last year. Seeing that thing run. Yeah. You know, he, not only is he a good guy, but I mean, the truck itself. It, the, he has proven that the six liter with the proper combination can be a force to be reckoned with. And you can't deny that. Do you think this single KC turbo stage two? I mean, I'm not saying anything. Is gonna I'm be not saying anything about any other six in liter. the same realm I'm as saying, Charlie Charlie's, Keeter's triple I'm turbo Charlie's monster. Right. We'll find out. So right. Ray, hey, Ray, Ray, we're not knocking your truck. I, I like the truck. I, I, I dig it in general. I love the, that you've had so much put into this truck. Chris, why don't you tell them a little bit about the fueling system? Yeah, so it has a uh, Warren Diesel, another gentleman that we are familiar with on the podcast. For sure. 190cc uh, injectors, which uh, equivalates to 100% over. Uh, Air Dog, 165 lift pump. Um, he has custom tuning from Truck Source Diesel. Hey, that's our that boys. We, yeah, yeah, we deal yeah. with them. Um, an Atlas 40 Fickham tune, which now you're out of the realm of what I'm, uh, I, I know what a Fickham is, but yeah, yeah, it I don't is know, what it is. I don't know what the fuck that is. Um, water meth injection, you know, intake exhaust. Built transmission, you know, pretty pretty standard, you know, stock uh, stock torque converter. Wow. You know, here's what I love about this truck. Uh, this is a daily driver. Yeah, this is like your your totally normal daily driver, and we love to see those trucks compete. And th that's what the that's what the this is about. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. So number twelve, uh, Jason Brown, Bluffton, Ohio, an 036 liter. A uh, little bit different setup, so yeah. Uh, calling it at eleven hundred horsepower, two thousand foot pounds of yeah. torque, compound sixty seven seven, uh, and an eighty eight. Both S four hundreds. Another guy with Warren Diesel. Pretty much all these guys are going to be running Warren Diesel fuel. We'll let you know if that's different as we go through it. Um, yeah, no, this is another another solid looking truck. It's another six liter. Uh, we're going to follow that up with another six liter. Yep. Uh, we got an O five F three fifty from David Dressbach. Out of Circleville, Ohio. So, 05, 6 liter, 1,200 horse, uh, estimated 2,000 foot pounds. Uh, Borg Warner S369 over an S480, so that would be, uh, you know, associated S3, S4 compound setup. Sure. 400 cc injectors, which uh, equivalents to 130%. They're a hybrid. Uh, I would love to know what what makes them hybrid, like what that terminology is. So maybe one day we can, you know, get some schooling on that. Yeah, you know, we're gonna have to bring on somebody like the guys over at Maverick Diesel who did his tuning to yep. uh, kind of explain to us what the hell a hybrid uh, six liter injector yep, is. Yep. Sorry for our ignorance, guys. Uh, we know a lot about diesel, but not about all of them. Yeah, not about those. Uh, so. But hey, here's one I think we probably have a little more exposure to. I don't know about expertise in, yep. uh, but Darren Dutton is bringing a six four oh uh, nine F three fifty. Man, this is a beautiful truck, yeah, huh, Chris? No. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous truck. Lifted, nice wheel tire combo, presented well. And a lot of the trucks are, are like that as well. But uh, it has an elite diesel engineering 66 over an 88 compound setup. River City diesel 150 over injectors, uh, air motive lift pump, uh, dual K16 injection pumps from elite diesel as well. Um, H&S uh, programming done by a gearhead. Uh, nitrous, so Paul's favorite. Yep. Uh, built trans, all the internals and what. I was gonna say. By the way, our last three com uh, or potential competitors here all uh, all had nitrous uh, as well. The next one's uh, interesting to me. So, 
Gene Friesen. Sure. Right? A 2017 Power Stroke. Uh, stock injector, stock pump, tuned. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Did you say a 17 stock? Yeah, that's what it says. Yeah, okay. Stock injection pump. Stock in, it has a lift pump, injection pump. It's all stock. 604 horsepower, 1,216 foot-pounds of torque. I feel like that's a reading off a dyno sheet, not an estimation, guys. Uh, we've talked about these these newer Fords uh, yeah. being capable of some big power. Uh, I definitely think this one is in the realm of possible, uh, depending on the dyno you're on for like 600, 570, you know, that's all, take, right? all within a shout of each other. Uh, but yeah, hey man, we would love to see two emissions equipped trucks. I can't believe there's two emissions, or I'm no, sorry, this, yeah, this one is not emissions no, equipped. But it's still stock. Okay, th- this one is still stock, so there, there's no major bolt-ons with it. Uh, Gene's out of Canada. I don't know. Any Canadian readers out there, uh, I know we got a few listeners. Go ahead and vote for your boy. Uh, love to see him out there. Uh, number 16, Matt Mayer. Uh, love the truck. This was actually my first diesel, so there's always a little bit of love for me when it comes to these. 97 Ford F-250 with a 7.3 power stroke. You can continue, Paul. Uh, oh, you know, listen. My first diesel... Listen. It got me I, in the game. I also had a 97 F350. And there were great I trucks. had an F350. This I is mean, an F250. Mine was nowhere near um, as nice as this, but shit. But same here. Same here. No, I, had, I know that. I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well played. Well Thank played, you. sir. Thank you. Uh, listen, man, he's got, a, he's got a lot of love into this truck, yeah. and I'm not here to take away from that. Uh, I am here to say, even with three stages of nitrous, dual water meth, uh, a, a competition fuel system, 350 cc injectors i just don't know if this is a competitive truck and i'm not saying like i don't know if this truck is competitive i'm just saying i don't know if anybody could pull off a 7.3 for a win at diesel power challenge well, that's i just the, don't know but that's for the voters to decide hey man and it, for the competition to find out that's right, right. no fair enough if you guys want to see a 7.3 competing at dpc all those old 7.3 guys um you know, vote time. it up man yeah. vote it up prove it I mean, Prove it. a 7.3's got a better shot than a 6.5. That's a fact. That That is a fact. A fact. That's undisputable. Now, the next truck's oh, pretty... fuck. God damn it, Chris. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, the next truck's pretty cool. Sean Matt's 2000 F250 with a 5.9 Cummins. This is, there's, there's one every year. There's always there a Fummins, and I want to say, I hope it goes. Yeah, no, me too. I mean, you're reading what this guy has to offer. It's a Borg Warner S485 by Stainless Diesel. Shied 5x25 triple fed injectors, a Waterman gear driven lift pump, and a Shied 13 millimeter P7100. That's a lot of fuel. I just want to point out that's like, in the common rail world, that's like two or three 12 millimeter pumps. Like, right. That, that's right. serious shit. But it's it's all being pushed to a single S485. That's a big turbocharger, and he's got nitrous, so okay. you concur. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, God. All right. What's next. the trans setup? Hold on, go back. What's, okay. What was his transmission setup in you this? You don't have that on your notes? No. <laughs> it's a 47RH, four speed. Okay. It, it's a three speed with reverse. Yeah. Okay. It has no overdrive. Okay. Fair enough. Who's next, Chris? Well, if my computer would work with me. Uh, so, number 18, uh, Matt Popiel out of Herod, Ohio. A lot of guys from Ohio here, Paul. Yeah, man. Man, that's the mecca here. Uh, six four liter Cummins in line six. Care to comment? Stroker? I like it. No, it's a Cummins. It's a Ford. I mean, we already established it's a Ford. It's it has a, a Cummins in it. It's got a six four Cummins. Okay. A six four liter is essentially what the, what they consider. It's a, a six seven block, and then it's uh, well, I believe it's six seven block, five nine rods, something like that. So it's it, it's a hybrid of the six seven and the five nine. Some could be deck plate motors. There's a bunch of different crazy options, but this is in fact a Cummins. Yeah. So. Uh, Couple S4, S4 turbocharger setups, uh, big injectors, lift pump, single 14 millimeter injection pump. Yeah, I dig it. He's so. got nitrous. Oh, here, intake exhaust. You were going to call this guy out thinking that he put a, a 6.4 and a 6 liter? No, 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 no. I, I agree that it's a stroker motor, but you didn't like that term, and you corrected me even though I was wrong. Oh, right. can we I edit said, that out? I said stroker, and then you said no, and then you described what a stroker motor is, and I was just going to let it go, but since you wow. wanted to call me out, we now will, I feel we like will now idiot. leave this in wow. in the show. 
You can no. <laughs> you'll cut that out, right? <laughs> You're not cutting our, that out. Our producer Justin is in in house with us today. Uh, he will make the final call on what goes into the show. Yo. You're a dick. So I'll our buy next fucking lunch. Our next truck. Then we look like a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Switzer. Is this a stroker? <laughs> <laughs> it it is. a power stroker. Yep. Yeah, six liter. Uh, it's an 03. It's a nice looking truck, man. A uh, thousand horsepower is what he's calling. He's got a compound kit: S369 SXE, S488 SXE. I've heard a lot of love on that new SXE line from yep. Borg Warner. They're bad uh, units. Supposed to be quick spooling. He's got nitrous on it. He's got some pretty standard tuning. Big injectors, 150 percent or 350 cc fuel lab, uh, lift pump, and dual high pressure oil pumps. Uh, so that's a pretty pretty stout setup right there, yep. man. Out of this Ford world. There's a badass trucks. There, th- there's a lot of six liters to choose from, yep. um, and there's a, there's a couple others as well, right? So, yep. so we'll see what goes. Uh, that's up to you. That's up to the voter, right? Uh, buy the magazine, print out the ballot, mail it in. Mm-hmm. Pretty simple process. Hey, before we dive into the Duramax yep. trucks, I want to give a quick shout out to Exergy. As you guys have been listening through all of these trucks, and as you'll continue to hear through through the few more we have for today. You're going to notice Exergy's name come up time and time and time yeah. again. And even as we look at the top tiers of competition uh, with ODSS and NHRDA when they were running, Exergy's always one of those names that you hear yeah. as you go through these trucks. And the reason is that we trust them. Uh, the reason is that we, we've we bought a lot of injection well, systems well, from them, and, and we've had such consistency yeah. in, that's, in the use. When I talk to guys, you know, it, it's always – you know, well, you do business with them. That's why you recommend them. You have them in your truck. That's why I recommend them. No, it's because we do a lot of builds or end users have these parts already and they're consistent. When you tune them, the end result, when they said, when they say here, this is the injector that's going to get you there with the proper supporting modifications, they'll get you there. Yeah. And you can control smoke output, really make those injectors burn nice and clean. They're very tunable. And the reason we sell them, the reason we put them in our trucks is because we trust them. Exactly. Right? So so that's that's why we recommend them. Uh, diving back into the Duramax trucks. Uh, now, you keep in mind, we have Cody Pulliam in the field. He's last year's winner. He crushed it. Yep. Great guy. Great truck. Uh, this year, you only got a couple of options for the Duramaxes, guys. There, there's only a few to pick from. Um, so as I go through these... Richard Coker uh, out you know of Midland, I, Texas. You know, you know, I love me a regular cab, right? I know it's a beautiful. Truck. I know. <laughs> so it's a 06 LBZ Duramax, uh, estimated 1199 horsepower, 1652 foot pounds. Uh, as you stated in, in prior uh, reads, this has to be a, a dyno number. Uh, yeah. I don't think you would estimate that. Um, <laughs> S472, S491. Uh, 250% injectors, 260 gallon per hour lift pump, and dual 10 millimeter stroker pumps. Yeah. So EFI live tuning, nitrous. Three stages of know, nitrous, yeah. Intercooler. Looks like he, he's got enough to compete. Yeah. Uh, and I think the same could be said for Billy Hartzell. Absolutely. He's out of Moonship, Pennsylvania. He's coming with an LMM, that's an 08 uh, Chevy Duramax 6.6. Only 800 horse and 1,500 foot-pounds of torque, but Chris, you and I talked about this a little bit. It's a lot to do with what's going to be the best the best setup and the best driver yeah, there. Yeah. Um, so he's got quite a few mods here, an S475. Um, 40, he's got 45% yeah. over injectors. He's dialed back a little bit and, and did not provide any information about um, – about nitrous a small setup like this could be very competitive and i think that's the thing that some guys overlook uh now our next list up i gotta say i've i've already cut out and printed off my ballot and sent it in i definitely had brad sankey on my ballot yeah so brad sankey's a friend of the of the shop you know he's been on the dyno does a sled pulling thing out in the the northern central wisconsin area um so shout out to you, Brad. Uh, but it's an 05 Duramax, uh, 1,250 horsepower, 2,600 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, back that up. That happened here on our Mustang Dyno. True story. Um, extra G performance, 250% injectors, fuel lab lift pump, dual injection pumps, of course, EFI live tuning. He also He's, has a new turbo since this yep, has yep. been published. Uh, it's nasty. It, this is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Got some nitrous there. So vote for him. You know, yep. Vote for all these guys, whoever you want to see compete. And then uh, number 23. Last but not least. Um, Yvonne Strube out of uh, Hicksville, New York, 06 Duramax, 
You want to take it off from there? Yeah, man. Okay, so this LBZ is spouting uh, or sporting 1,250 horsepower, running a S371, S488 compound setup. He's got 200% injectors, 12-millimeter pump, uh, some EFI live tuning, water meth, and nitrous. Uh, this is another guy that I definitely think, uh, you know, he could be a, a real competitor out there. Absolutely. So, guys, this has been the 2019 um, ballot ballot yep. discussion for Diesel Power Challenge. Chris, uh, myself, and even our producer, Justin, are really excited to be out there. We're going to report live at Diesel Power Challenge. So you guys will be getting some uh, real-time updates from the podcast uh, at that event. And, of course, I think we're also nailed down with KJ to be announcing yes. who gets voted in at UCC. So to all of our you know existing listeners or longtime listeners, last year when we were at uh, Ultimate Callout Challenge Day 2, uh, we ended up having the privilege of reading off uh, the votes for DPC and who was going to be competing the, the month after. Yeah. Um, and we're uh, in hopes or there's been talk, it's been finalized at this point, that that is what is going to happen again this year at 2019 UCC. We're on board, man. We're excited. Uh, for today, this has been Paul Wilson. And Chris Emke. Thanks for listening. The Diesel Performance Podcast is brought to you by Calibrated Power Solutions, home of DuramaxTuner.com. Calibrated Power develops emissions-equipped calibrations for a wide variety of diesel powertrains, including the Duramax, Cummins, Power Stroke, John Deere, Case, New Holland, and many more. For more information and great customer service, check out CalibratedPower.com or call 815-568-7920. That's 815-568-7920. You'll cut that out, right? <laughs> You're not cutting our, that out? Our producer, Justin, is in, in-house with us today. Uh, he will make the final call on what goes into the show. Yo, you're a dick. So our I'll buy next, you fucking lunch. Our next-